It is hot. We're in Hyde Park, a, another historic district of Tampa, Florida. This particular quarter of Hyde Park uh, is a little bit slow to come around to uh, being restored to its maximum potential. But there are some serious investors working in the neighborhood and this is one of the few remaining fixer-uppers that was on the market until about a month ago and uh, somebody picked it up it was a lot of money and they're going to put a lot more into it uh, to bring it back to its uh, original architectural form they've turned it into a duplex a lot of these huge old winter homes down here were turned into boarding homes and this once was considered an undesirable part of town to live in as of about the middle 1970s uh, a resurgence has been taking place and people are clamoring to live down here again i'm going to have to be working away at this window that somebody has deliberately sealed shut with a caulking gun and I'm gonna to have to get serious with this it's called a multi-tool and it's a blade that jitters back and forth and I recommend getting a good blade such as this one they're about eight or twelve dollars a piece what I'm going to have to do is resort to some extreme measures to break this loose I'm going to have to do that not only on the outside but on the inside whoever did this clearly had no intention of ever opening this window again and it's the same throughout the rest of the house some 18 windows are all sealed shut and they've hired me to break them loose and put new sash cords on well here's a window that I worked on the other day and unfortunately there was some damage to the lower portion of the upper sash. All of this damage is as a result of an air conditioning duct that was blowing directly on the window and it caused some damage on the inside. The outside's fine and it's still got plenty of strength to it. Uh, there's no sense in ordering a new sash and running the guy's tab up. So what I'm going to do is a temporary measure. I'm just going to uh, do something quick and easy. And I'm going to add a little strip to the top. Then I'm going to add a strip of sheet metal and this will act as a splint and this will just get just clasped in place directly over that little strip of wood. and that will hold it. Now, mind you, this is just a temporary measure. This probably won't last any more than 45 years or so. And if it fails, you just call me and I'll come back and take care of it. Let's put our sash lock back in place, the keeper anyway. This is a, a little bit longer screw than would have been used originally. There, we're good to go and I just saved the uh, new homeowner about $300. Now, 
you'll also remember from an earlier video, I explained how to put in new sash cords. And I think it needs a little bit more of an explanation. I'm going to come up from the bottom and this little hole is about 27 inches from the bottom of the sash. So I'm going to come up about 24 inches. This is where the this is where the knot needs to be, but I'm going to give it a little bit extra. I'm going to take the tail end of the chain and feed it up over the top of the roller. And I've made a mark on the chain. I know where it's halfway, so it's perfectly balanced. And I'm going to tie the first half of a shoelace knot and snug it up a bit. And I'll feed the rest of the chain in. And I want the rope to be under that knot, if, if that makes any sense to you. Because as I pull the chain, I don't want this string to go over the edge of the roller. So I am going to push the rope in. And at the same time, I'm going to pull the tail end of this chain. And now I'm going to tie my rope. We're going to start out with a U shape, okay? And you want the tail towards you. You're going to go around, back, and around. So you're going to go around one and a half times and come through the back. And if I remember correctly from my Boy Scout days, that's called a figure of eight knot. Now, uh, if you want to tighten it up a little bit, you can snap the rope. And the more you pull on this, the tighter that knot gets. So I'm going to pull the rope and get the weight all the way dead center at the top. And I'm going to put my thumb on that mark at 24 inches. Remember, the knot needs to be here, but I made the mark here. I've given us an extra three inches. I'm going to put my thumb on that knot and go an extra six inches. Then I'm going to tie the simplest little knot. And we have to put our weight compartment cover or access panel back into position and um, if you'll remember from the other video I told you it is held in place with these little screws well these have uh, rusted to the point that there's very little thread left on them so I'm going to uh, upgrade to a slightly bigger and wider screw. There. That will be plenty sufficient for the next 40 years. Then when someone comes in here in about the year 2061 and they need to put new ropes on, they will be able to very easily access the weights. Now we will put our lower sash back in. I will pull the rope down. Now just for good measure, I'm going to put the shortest little nail in there. It's a three penny common nail. Prevent that rope from ever breaking free of where I put that little knot.
Now it's time to put the uh, perimeter stop and I'm going to smear a little bit of soap on that just as I have the window sash. Nail it back into position using the original nail holes. I've located those by punching through from the back. The idea, of course, is that this stop has to be adjusted to the window and allow it some movement for expansion when it gets humid. There we have it, a very simple repair to remedy a rather expensive problem. Well, it's about high 12 and it's time to take a break. Beginning in the early 1950s, the Eisenhower administration implemented what was called the National Highway Act. They put major highways linking every major city, east and west mostly, but also north and south. We had a two ocean navy, why shouldn't we have a two ocean army? These interstates were very disruptive to old neighborhoods like Hyde Park here. Uh, it cut them in half or quarters sometimes and disrupted life to the point that my parents' generation opted to move out of the city and commute back and forth to the suburbs where they were offered more spacious and modern housing. And that's where I spent my early adulthood until about 1973 when a gas crisis occurred and it was difficult to find a gas station that was open. And if you did, you could only get so many gallons and we were driving around in big cars and trucks with big engines and people thought twice about do I really want to commute back and forth from the suburbs into the city. My generation reclaimed the city that my parents generation abandoned and ever since the mid 70s you've seen a resurgence in <coughs> these old neighborhoods coming back together. Uh, Port Tampa, Ybor City, Hyde Park and Seminole Heights, to name a few, just here in Tampa. This is where I take my lunch most every day. <laughs> this is the last bastion of male domain. I spend most of my spare time here with my good friends. This is uh, Manny Basiglio. He is right. our uh, patriarch here. Uh, Manny was yeah. the general manager here for many years. And I think you've been coming in here for what, 40 years or more? 41 years. Man. Yeah. Nice looking pipe you got there, mister. That's a serious habit. <laughs> And Michael. This is Justin. He's our newest associate here. He just started a couple of weeks ago. I'd like to introduce you to Gordon Smith. He's the owner and proprietor of Edwards Tobacco. And Gordon, how long have they been here? Uh, we've been here uh, 62 years. And I remember your dad used to run the shop and then you took he over did. Uh, the last 10 or 12 years. A lot of famous people come in here and have yeah. come in here. Yeah, the customers is what makes the place for sure. Manny, who's the hockey player that comes in? Uh, Phil Esposito, who started the Lightning as well, comes in. He's a regular customer here. If it weren't for the cigars, there wouldn't be any pipes. And just about everybody that smokes pipes smokes cigars. This whole display case is devoted to Rocky Patel, one of the premier cigar makers in South America. Now we're getting into the main humidor here. And you could just feel the humidity hit you like a curtain. And incidentally, that's why Tampa is such a preferred location for cigar making. Uh, because of the humidity, the tobacco stays humid practically year-round. My favorite 
without a doubt, is Arturo Fuente. So I'm going to get one of these Canones. Cannon. Still on the house, but no uh, tobacco shop would be complete without a cigar store in the Well, there's good reason to move back into downtown Tampa and the surrounding area because this is the seat of the Hillsborough County Government Center. It's also uh, a lot of state and federal as well as city government offices are located right here in downtown Tampa. Also, it is the headquarters of Central Command, which is at the southernmost tip of Tampa. McDill Air Force Base is located there, and that's where everything takes place in the event of a national emergency. There's a lot going on in the way of government and business and entertainment. Uh, so come on down next winter when it gets cold and let me work on your windows. You can leave them open year round practically. This was another window that I have to come back to and there was an air conditioner in here and the air conditioner dripped water on the uh, sill and caused it to rot. Now in order to get that sill out and replace it, it's, it's a big expensive ordeal. So in the meantime, I'm just going to make a quick repair by slipping a piece of sheet metal over that damaged area and then I'll put some little nails through here with some sealant and then run a bead of caulk all along here on the outside and that will be good for many many years there's already a deliberate slope of about 10 degrees so any water that gets splashed up on this sill will drain out and away from the house and any condensation that occurs on the inside of the window will just drip outside underneath the sash as well this is what I call a cabin grade window. Somebody bought the sashes and made the frames on the job site. And this was a porch, an open porch at one time that somebody enclosed. And there's no way to get to the weights except to remove the interior or exterior casing. And That's exactly what I'm going to do. And that allows us access to the weight cavity. There's no removable panel. And in order to get to these, unfortunately, we just have to pull the casing off. Now, this was probably done back in the 1960s, I'm guessing. And uh, there's no plaster and lath here. It's a drywall, so it wasn't too risky to pull this piece of casing off to restring the window. However, when you do have the old plaster and lap and you have to resort to this, you have to be very careful because when you pry that casing loose, you could pull a strip of that plaster lap and a big chunk of plaster will just pop off the wall in less than a second. So, <sighs> Unfortunately, that is what you have to do sometimes. Assuming that somebody's going to have to come in here in the next 40 years, I'm going to put a minimum of nails in. And that will make it easy for the next person that comes along. Well, we're good stewards of history, aren't we? We've saved these windows. These windows are 100 years old, and I'm sure they'll last another 100 years. I'm Brian with Historic Woodwork. Thanks for watching. At your service.